Welcome to Angry Andy Reviews, and this is my review for Star Wars The Acolyte Episodes 1 and 2. Now, if you weren't aware, if you weren't familiar, The Acolyte is a story set 100 years before the events of Star Wars Episode 1, The Phantom Menace. It is set during the High Republic era, more importantly the back end of the High Republic era, and the High Republic era itself is a period of time when the Jedi were in complete control and peace reigned throughout the galaxy. Like I said, this is towards the back end of the High Republic era when the Jedi were seemingly at the height of their own hubris and their own self-belief that everything was perfectly fine and that they had nothing to worry about, which we saw within the prequels. So, this specific series sees a respected Jedi Master, Sol, played by the, the actor who was in Squid Games. Forgive me, I cannot remember his name at this point. I think it's Lee Jung Jai. Uh, forgive me, terrible pronunciations, and they will continue potentially throughout this review and all of my reviews for all time. And this sees him come across crimes that have been committed by a mysterious Force user who turns out to be the twin sister I'd say spoilers, but it's not spoilers at all. It turns out to be the twin sister of his former Padawan learner, which has the potential to reveal greater, darker mysteries about a mysterious benefactor and the reasons why she is hunting down Jedi to destroy them. So, the first couple of episodes, there are going to be spoilers here throughout. And in the initial episode, in the very first scene, we see May, one of the sisters, Take down a Jedi. Carrie Ann Moss, if you believe it, she is in this show for all of five minutes before she is killed off. What a waste. <laughs> what an absolute waste. Admittedly, the little fight scene they have, the unarmed fight scene between May and Jedi Master Indara is, you know, quite a good fight. It really does showcase how Carrie Ann Moss has got this, this unique ability for martial arts skills to keep herself quite stiff and yet be able to move fluidly between martial arts movements you know it's it's more fan service for those of us that love the matrix and miss the old classic you know matrix style fighting um but then yes yeah, she is killed off immediately and in the next scene we see Oja again one of the sisters and there's no surprise here what the whole situation is with that so beyond the sort of little bit of action we get more action in the second episode between between May and Sol again an unarmed combat sort of fight beyond that I am struggling with these two episodes you've got an interesting setup in terms of May wanting to target very very four specific Jedi for some unknown reason as of yet. I can probably guess at what that reason may be. And there is this whole suggestion that maybe there was something going on with the twins being separated, being swapped, maybe. Who knows? I don't know. All that we know for sure is that there was some kind of fire which resulted in May and Osha's family being killed off and they believed each other of them were dead at the time. That's where we get to by the end of episode two. Now... My main problem with this show at the minute, with it, with these first two episodes, is the dialogue and the writing. It's very, very clunky. It's it's borderline terrible. I'll be quite honest with you. The, the dialogue is borderline terrible. It's riddled with attempts at really, really simplistic comedy and, and banter and back and forth. And it, it doesn't work. It doesn't hit at any point whatsoever the characters i think are the main problem with that they are not written very well whatsoever they don't come across very well apart from Saul and osha to a degree they just don't land at all they do not come across whatsoever and the dialogue between them just feels false fundamentally it feels false and forced and weightless 
just like the characters themselves they feel weightless we're, we're given these these multitude of different jedi and they all feel as though there's not much to them beyond the makeup and the way they look and the fact they're all wearing different colored cloaks to what we saw in the prequels and all this jargon and they've all got different color lightsabers so what do we what do we have beyond that we have this mysterious story which doesn't really come across as being all that mysterious because we are robbed of the mystery of who this 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 Jedi killer is immediately and to be fair to it he kind of gave it away in the trailers as well and then we have this mysterious benefactor who sprouts some absolute bullshit jargon at the end of the first episode we don't even see this person we just know they're wearing a mask and they have a red lightsaber how exciting um and it's just a waffling piece of line of dialogue that means nothing says nothing and ultimately references nothing what oh my god it's just an evil person saying something that sounds evil wow how exciting how mysterious <sighs> terrible writing one of the fundamental pillars of grabbing someone's attention is completely decimated straight away by terrible fucking writing for god's sake how did we come we had Andor. I know people are going to say this all the friggin' time, but we had Andor, right? How have we, how have we slipped away from that? We've had Obi-Wan Kenobi, we've had Ahsoka, and now we've got this, where the writing is just dribble. Absolute dribble. Think about what you want people to say. Think about what you want to come across in the episodes. I, don't, I can do away with comedy and banter in favour of solid written character moments. And there are little flickers of potential here in these first two episodes where okay we can get some serious meat on the bone with these characters Sol himself seems to be hiding something within himself about about this whole mystery of the two of the two twins and you know where where they've come from and how they've been separated like i said each of the two twins believes the other you know died in this in this disaster in this fire disaster which killed all the family so what's going on there what is this mystery how do the other four jedi that may wants to kill factor into this what are they hiding that's interesting but we don't build on that we just have little flex a shame so far an absolute shame and beyond that we do have the aesthetics okay so the aesthetics are perfectly fine they're perfectly fine. It's a, a, a meld between uh, the prequel trilogy and the, the original trilogy and how dank and dirty it looks and how clean and flashy that looks. It's sort of like a meshing of all that together. Very much like painting as though we're, we're on the underworld side of it. Uh, but beyond that, there, there's not really else, not really much else to sort of grab hold of. You know, I, 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 great, they've got yellow lightsabers, great, they're wearing white cloaks and yellow tunics, fantastic, look how different, all you've done is just put them in the wash and put a, you know, a, a colour blender in or something, it doesn't, it means nothing to me at this point, it means nothing to me at this point, so what else have we got going for it, I don't, I don't really know, we've got a decent setup, okay, but then we need to have some basis of, you know, I, I'm invested, I want to come back, and at the moment with these, these first two episodes, I don't have that. Tonally, it feels off. There's a moment in the second episode where May is talking to this, this, this dealer, this poison chalice man, and God, it doesn't feel right at all. They're, they're, they're almost choking back and forth between each other. I'm, I'm, you're just supposed to be the villain. What's going on here? What, what, is, this, what is this sequence of dialogue? Why, why are you, what, what's going on? It's baffling. There's so many baffling moments within these opening two episodes that <laughs> I didn't really know what to think. And if that's the case, then I, I really am struggling. I really am struggling. And I think that is probably one of the, the most worrying things going forward, I think, is that there's already a level of inconsistency within the storytelling, within the dialogue, within the characters, within the, the general tone of the show there's already a massive inconsistency it's almost like they went oh that's too dark no pull it back we can't do that because the families will start crying well why lean into it go for it it worked for andor you know the reception for andor was superb what what are you worried about 
I don't know. I really don't know. And that's the problem. I don't know. At this point, I really don't know. It's mildly exciting, I suppose, when we get into some action beats. The rest of it feels like a bit of a drudge, a bit of a, a trek through a marsh that I really am not excited to do. You're leading me through a muddy patch without any wellies. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already struggling. I'm already concerned going forward. But having said that, I think... You, 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 you're fucking baiting, aren't you? That's bait. You're baiting a wider mystery. You're baiting that this is the end of the High Republic, that this is going to lead into the reasons why the Sith returned to power. Who are, who is this mysterious benefactor? What is his plans or their plans? I wouldn't be surprised if it turns out to be Indara, who is in the mask. It's Carry On Moss. If you play the double blind, that would be hilarious. But I, I'd, I'd enjoy it. It'd be, it'd be enjoyable. Um, but then we'll, we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? I did, however, uh, referring back to what I said about the, the the mysterious benefactor, as I'm calling them, because we don't know what the fuck his plan is. We don't know what his reasons are at all at this point. We can uh, assume why May's reasons are for doing what she's doing. But I had a look at what acolyte actually means, and it means one who assists a member of the clergy in a liturgical service by performing minor duties. Second, one who attends or assists a leader. I can see that. Great, okay. But one who assists a member of the clergy performing minor duties. So murder's a minor duty now, is it? <laughs> Do us a favour, mate. When you finish cleaning the toilet, just go, go and murder that geezer over there for me. Ta, banter. Horrendous. There you go. There you go. <laughs> I think... All jokes aside, because there's too many of them in the, in this in these in these opening two episodes. I think it's going to be a case of wait and see at the minute. I don't think this. I don't think these opening two episodes really sold the show very well. To be quite honest, I think they are part and parcel of a much wider problem. Because um, to be fair to you, the trailers didn't really sell it to me either. I'd be interested to see what other people think, so by all means, leave a comment down below. Let me know your thoughts. I am firmly in the middle. I'm not bashing anyone who's performed in, in this so far, because I don't think they've been given the service. So how can I how can I bash any of the actors in, in this show when, fundamentally, I don't think they've been given any service? I don't think anyone's particularly bad. There are some parts of the dialogue they're saying that I don't believe. But, you know, they're only actors at the end of the day, so it is what it is. I'm, I'm sitting fairly middle on the fence here at the moment. I, I, I'm intrigued to see what comes next, but at the same time, I'm not really all that fussed either. I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I've not been drawn in. I've not been drawn in, and that's a massive problem for me. So here I am. I am sitting at a... a Oh, I'm sitting at a 5 out of 10 at the moment, because I am firmly in the middle. I think it's okay, but I don't think it's given me anything to really latch on to at the moment. Hopefully there will be more to come, hopefully there is more to come, and more to show us, and deeper storytelling going forward in the next few episodes. But we'll have to see. We are a quarter of the way through the series already, if you can believe it. If you can believe it. So there you go. That's my thoughts. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about these first two episodes? Um, yeah. Sound off. Let me know if, if I'm wrong. If you think I'm wrong, tell me Tell me why you think I'm wrong. Let me know. Because like I said to you, I am... I'm, I'm, a, bit, I'm a bit lost, to be quite honest with you. I'm a bit lost. I'm a bit in the middle of what to really think and feel about this show. Because the opportunity is there. I don't think they're fucking grabbing it at the moment. But let me know your thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please do like and subscribe to the channel. And get involved. Reach out. Speak your peace. Speak your words. Utter your fragrances upon the lines of dialogue that is the comments section down below. And let's see if we can write and talk better and discuss better than any of the characters in the show so far. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.